Hey everyone, welcome to part 81 of my Pokemon game series in Community. So in this video, we'll implement a count selector like this so that we can sell multiple items if we want. We'll implement this in such a way that we can reuse the same count selector for buying multiple items also. Alright, let's look at how to implement this. You can support the making of this series by becoming a Patreon and get some cool rewards for it like access to the complete project files of the series, exclusive tutorials that are not covered on YouTube, and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, I'll create the UI for the count selector. So let me go inside the UI canvas. So the count selector UI will be a small box like the wallet UI. So let me just duplicate the wallet UI and rename it to count selector UI. All right. And let me just disable the choice box and then place the count selector UI over here. Okay. I'll increase its size a little. That should be fine. So next we need two text inside the count selector UI. One for the count and one for the price. So I'll name the first text as count text. And then I'll duplicate it and create the price text. All right. So next to arrange these two text, I'll use a horizontal layout group. All right. So let me add a horizontal layout group. I'll change the child alignment to middle center and turn on child control size width and height. So now the two text will be arranged automatically like this. So let me just change the placeholder of the count text. All right, so this is how I want the UI. So now let's write the script for it. So inside scripts in the UI folder, I'll create a new script called count selector UI. All right. So in this script, first we need a reference to the count text and the price text. So let me create two serialized field variables for that. And by the way, to use text, we have to import the unity engine.ui namespace. So let me do that. So we have the count text. So next I'll create a variable for the price text. Okay. So next I'll create the function to show the count selector UI. So I'll create a public function for that. And this function will be a coroutine. So let me name this show selector. And in the first parameter of the function, it will take the max count. So this will be the maximum count that we can select. And then for the second parameter, we'll take the price per unit. All right, so this will be the price of a single item. So we can multiply this with the count to calculate the total price and we can show it in the price text. All right, so we need these two parameters. So in this function, first we need to show the UI. So I'll call game object dot set active true. Okay. So next we need to wait until the user has made a selection. So for that, I'll create a boolean over here called selected. So this will be set to false at the start of the show function. And then we'll set it to true once the user makes the selection. All right. So we want this function to wait until the selected is true. So here I'll use a wait until function to do that. 
all right so we want to wait until the selected becomes true so next let's write the code for the selection so first i'll create a variable to store the selection so i'll call this current count okay so at the start of the function i'll set the current count to one and then we should update it based on the user's input right so in the update function i'll check for the user's input so if the user pressed the up arrow key then i'll increment the current count and otherwise if the user pressed the down arrow key i'll decrement it all right so we have implemented the selection logic in this series so many times so i'm not going to explain this in depth all right so next we should clamp the current count between one and the max count so first let me store the max count into a variable so that we can use it outside the show selector function and while we are here let me also create a variable for the price per unit okay so at the start of the function i'll set the parameter value to this variable all right let me also set it to the price per unit variable okay so now we'll be able to use the max count over here so let me go ahead and clamp the current count between one and the max count so i'll use mathf.clamp and i'll clamp the current count between one and the max count so next if the current count has changed we should update its value in the count text and also change the price text accordingly so to check if the current count has changed first i'll store it in a variable called previous count at the start of the function all right and then from here if the current count is not equal to the previous count then we should set the value in the count text and the price text so let me create a new function for that i'll call this set values so in this function first i'll set the count text so to the count text we need to set the current count variable and then i'll also add an x at the start to indicate that this is a count okay so next i'll set the price text so the value of price text will be price per unit multiplied by the current count all right and at the start i'll just add a dollar sign okay so now if the count is changed we can call the set values function so this will change the values in the text if the current count changes and by the way we should also call the set values function when we show the count selection ui for the first time so i'll call it from here all right so we are done with handling the selection changes so next if the user presses the z key then we can close this ui and continue to the next step so from here i'll set the selected boolean to true all right so this will stop the wait until coroutine and the flow will reach this line so now 
the final thing that we need to do is we need to return the value of the current count from this function but since this function is a coroutine we can't just return it normally so i'll use an action to do that just like we did in our choice selection ui all right so here i'll create an action that takes an integer parameter so i'll call this action on count selected and by the way to use action we have to import the system namespace all right so now from here we can invoke the action and we can pass the current count in the parameter all right so now the caller of this function will be able to retrieve the value of the current count by passing this action so that's all we have to do for selecting the count so now we can just disable the count selector ui by calling game object dot set active false okay so now let's call this function to show the count selector ui when the player is trying to sell an item so from the shop controller in the sell item function we can show the count selector ui from here but we should only show the count selector if the item that we are trying to sell has more than one count in the inventory right if there is only a single item then there is no point in showing the count selector ui we can directly proceed into the selling code so first we need to get the count of the item we are trying to sell so how can we get the count of an item from the inventory so let's open the inventory class so here right now we don't have any function to get the count of an item so let me actually create a new function for that over here this function should actually return an integer because we need to return the count of the item so i'll call this function get item count and it will take the item in the parameter all right so the count of the item will be in the item slot so we need to get the item slot first so this is actually the code to get the item slot so let me just copy and paste it into our get item count function to save time all right so now we have the slot of this item so if the item slot is not equal to null then we'll have the count of the item in item slot dot count so let me just return that from this function and otherwise if we don't have an item slot then we can just return zero indicating we don't have this item in the inventory okay so now from here we can get the count of the item by calling inventory dot get item count all right let me just store this in a variable called item count so if the item count is greater than one then we should show the count selector ui and let the user select the number of items they want to sell all right so before i show the count selector ui let me actually show a dialog like how many would you like to sell okay so for this dialog i'll pass the wait for input value as false because we want to show the count selector ui immediately after the dialog we don't want to wait for the user to press the z key okay and then i also pass false for the auto close parameter so this is because we don't want the dialog to close automatically we should only close it once the user has selected a count from the count selector ui right so now after the dialog we can show the count selector ui 
so first let me actually get a reference to the count selector UI all right I'll create a serialized field variable for that over here and now I can call count selector UI dot show selector to show the count selector UI so for the max count I'll pass the item count itself and then for the price per unit I'll pass the selling price of the item okay and finally we should also pass the action so that we can retrieve the selected count so what I'll do is here I'll create a variable called count to sell and I'll set it to 1 by default and then if you're showing the count selector UI I'll retrieve the selected count from the action and I'll set it to the count to sell all right and by the way let me actually put a yield return at the start since this is a coroutine okay so once the user has selected a count we can go ahead and close this dialog right since we are setting the auto close of the dialog to false it won't close automatically we'll have to close it manually so from here i'll call dialog manager dot instance dot close dialog okay so now it should show the count selector if there are more than one item and this variable will have the number of items that we want to sell all right so now we should also update the selling price based on the number of count that we want to sell so the selling price over here is the selling price for a single item right so to get the total selling price we have to multiply it with the count to sell okay and by the way I just realized I made a mistake over here so here instead of assigning the selected count to count to sell I'm assigning the item count so let me change that to the selected count all right so next when removing the item from the inventory right now we are just reducing its count by one but now since we can sell more than one item we can't simply reduce the count by one we have to reduce it by the count that we sold right so in the remove item function I'll also take a parameter for the count and then I'll reduce the count of the item by the count parameter all right and by the way let me set the value of the count parameter to 1 by default so that we don't have to always pass it and let me also just rename this to count to remove just to make it more clear so now when calling the remove item function when selling an item we can also pass the count that we sold as the second parameter so let me do that all right so that's all we need to do now we should be able to sell more than one item so let's go to unity and test so first we need to attach the script and the references so I'll assign the count selector UI script and then we need to assign the count text and the price text all right and finally we should also assign the count selector UI in the shop controller script so let me go ahead and do that okay and by the way let me also disable the count selector UI so that it won't be shown by default all right so now we can go ahead and test the game so let me test selling items 
So now if I try to sell an item that has more than single count, then I'll get this count selector UI. All right. And I can change the count by using the up and down arrow keys. So let's say I want to sell three portions. So I should get $150 for that. All right. So yeah, you can see that we got $150 and three portions were reduced from our inventory. Okay. So our account selector is working fine. So I'll stop the video here. In the next video, We'll implement buying items so before you leave make sure to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video